Hey, Dr. Berg here again. In this short video, I'm going to talk about pleasure foods. So if we look below the cravings, we really have a situation where people live for pleasure sensations, okay? So they're always trying to relieve their body stress by eating certain foods. So the reason or the problem that people are trying to solve when they're eating these bad foods is to relieve stress, satisfy hunger, um, overcome upset or fatigue or even pain. So this is really what you need to ask yourself when you're tempted with these foods. What problem am I trying to solve? Am I bored? Am I in pain? And try to fix the real problem instead of trying to cover it up with foods. Um, so not that you have an addiction, I'm sorry, a craving, but people are literally addicted to the junk food and they're in this, it's a trap. It's a total trap. Why? Because as soon as you give into it, it's going to cause you to want to eat more and more of it. There's a, there's a guy named Paul Stitt. Uh, he wrote a book called Beating the Food Giants. He was a chemist that worked for the main food uh, manufacturing companies. And he, in his book, he talks about there's 22 different chemicals that they put in foods to cause you to keep eating the foods over and over and over. They're very addictive, and that's why you can't just stop eating one. You know, one is MSG, monosodium glutamate. That enhances the taste of the flavor of the food, so the food tastes better than it really is, so you can get a buy with eating low-quality food. So that would be one. So what happens when you have these problems and you're stressed, hungry, or tired, you become more reactive. You're not going to think in, in see, uh, consequences. You're not going to think tomorrow. You just want it now. I was at an event last night and uh, they had cake and they had these incredibly delicious chocolate chip cookies out of the oven. I mean, they're warm, they're soggy, they're, the texture is incredible, the smell, the aroma in the air. And then they had this uh, bread out of the oven as well, freshly made bread, okay? So you have all these people and I'm watching them, and they're just like a magnet, just like they just they smell it, and they go over there, and they're just, everyone's like eating all these foods, and they're not even conscious about doing it. They're just like doing it without being aware what they're really doing, and then when they eat it, they're like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? So food does tend to um, affect people, um, and it triggers various responses that cause hormones to be affected. Now. The hormones that are affected are serotonin and this other hormone called beta endorphins. So when, those, when the serotonin hormone goes down, um, you'll tend to, through stress or the up, being upset or hungry, your body doesn't have words to talk to you. It will talk to you through cravings. So any type of body craving, it's your body's way of communicating. It wants something, but it's not going to be able to tell you exactly what it wants. Instead of saying, I want kale, it'll say, give me something sweet right now. You know, so you'll have just this urge, this impulse to eat something that you know you shouldn't be eating. Okay? So there's a chemical imbalance that occurs with cravings. There's also a nutrition balance. When you're deficient in minerals, especially potassium, it, you won't have that stability with blood sugars. So blood sugars is, is another effect because when the sugar goes down in the body, um, what you need to be doing is correcting that, but your body won't tell you that. It'll just say, eat sugar now. Because the body only thinks about quick fixes, not long-term solutions. It wants to relieve the pain now. So it'll tell you just to quickly eat something sweet, and then you get the sugar up, and then it goes down again, and goes up and down and up and down. Okay, so, so people will satisfy that. So what I'm saying is that try to increase your awareness. So the next time you crave something, or next time you go to a bakery, try to find out what you're trying to solve. Are you trying to release stress? Um, and be aware of what you're eating and realize that this could block fat burning for at least 72 hours. Not just 80 calories, but a longer term effect because insulin, if insulin is triggered in the body and your metabolism is slow, it can block fat burning for up to 72 hours. Okay, not just from even a small amount of something sweet, not just like an hour. So, so we have this situation where you crave and it affects the hormones and then your body will start giving you cravings, okay? 
So now, when people are depressed or they have anxiety, they go to their doctor and the doctor tends to give them a prescription drug, okay, whether it's Paxil, Prozac, Effexor, all these psychotropic drugs. Now what happens, the way these work is they, they take that small amount of hormone you have left, a little bit of serotonin, for example, and they cause it to, and they recycle it. So they, it re helps you recycle that last drop you have over and over and over to make it appear that you have more than you really do, but in fact you have a smaller amount, okay? Now, sometimes when you do blood tests, it won't show up on a blood test. And that's another reason, but I'll get to that in a moment. I'll, I wanna come back to, I wanna focus on this right here. So when you take these psychiatric drugs, all they do is they fake your body out and make it think it has more than it really does. Um, so you feel better, right? So all the people will come in and they'll tell me, oh yeah, I said you're in psych drugs. Yeah, and it's like, it's, it's working for me. It's, it's really working. I said, define working. What do you mean working? Oh, I feel better. I says, yeah, you're gonna feel better if you take cocaine, but it, has, it comes with a package. So the side effects from psychiatric drugs are not only serious side effects of the brain, toxic brain side effects, and in fact, nearly all of the shooters in the schools were on some type of psychiatric drug, and that's a big side effect too. And that's nothing that the, the media is talking about, but it's a total uh, direct link. But it also will cause you to be wooden, um, and you're just, you're, you're like not there. I can tell when someone's on a psych drug because they're not fully there. They're a little bit delayed. And uh, so it makes it, your emotions wooden, causes weight gain. Uh, and there's just many, many other side effects from, from suicide to aggressive behavior to all sorts of things health-wise. So there's side effects and there's also something else called receptor downgrade. Now, what does that mean, receptor downgrade? Well, the little receptors that receive that hormone over a period of time become downgraded. So when you take this drug over time, you're going to need more and more and more and more of it to create the same effect. So it, that small dosage no longer works. And it's so funny because doctors will say, well, well, let's just take this short term for the crisis and then we'll have you come off of it. Well, you're never going to come off that stuff as far as the doctor is concerned because you're going to need more and more of it. You don't, it doesn't get better with time. It gets worse. So unless you're doing something to correct the real problem, you're going to be hooked on it for a long, long time. And then it's going to eventually not work at all. So long term, it's a bad solution. But the doctors really never cover the actual correction of the real problem, which has to do with food. They don't talk about your eating. They don't look at the effect of all these junk foods uh, or sugar or refined carbs. In fact, one of the things that will affect um, serotonin is, is grains, specifically the gluten. Gluten is the protein of the grain. That's the, that's the thing that's creating so many allergies and all sorts of diseases like celiac and um, iliac sprue and diverticulitis. All these digestive painful problems come from the gluten in the grain. And it also creates depression and all sorts of anxiety. So there's a lot of side effects with gluten. But the reason why um, wheat is bad for you is because not only does it turn into sugar, but that gluten uh, breaks down into your stomach into a small protein that can cross the blood-brain barrier. It goes up into the brain and it starts to affect your chemistry because it goes in the receptors, the opiate receptors, the morphine receptors in your brain. So they, you're talking like wheat is acting like a drug in your brain. And that's why there's so much pleasure in wheat and, and bread and this is why people are addicted to it. So it does affect your mental state. And in kids, it can actually create the reverse effect and create hyperactivity, ADD, brain fog, memory problems. Oh my gosh. So when I see people too, even with psoriasis all over their arm, all I do is I get them off the gluten and boom, it clears right up. So it has a lot of effects. So if you don't believe me, try, try to just get it out of your diet for a week and just see how much better you feel. Uh, from arthritis to allergies to digestion, I mean, I used to live on bread. I remember one day driving the back seat of this cab and I, I bought this huge roll of French bread. I downed that whole thing 
and it didn't satisfy me. I could keep eating it over and over and over. So very low nutrients, very high in carb, and I started developing a pizza crust around my waist. But I used to live on that bread, and when I stopped that bread, um, oh my gosh, all my digestive uh, problems cleared up. So bread, sugar, does trigger serotonin, um, and then it comes up and it comes down, up and down, up and down. That's why it's a pleasurable thing. So it's a trap though because these pleasure foods end up being pain foods down the way, down the road. Not just in digestive pain and arthritis, but being fat and being tired and having a lot of health problems. Okay, so if you tell people to not, not eat this food, it's very difficult sometimes because they are addicted. So the question is, how do we overcome depriving ourselves? Because it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to deprive you of pleasure. I'm saying you can't eat this anymore. It's not going to work long term. So how do we handle the pleasure of these grains with some, we have to give them a substitute basically. So the substitute, what I recommend is some foods that will create a neutral effect or a positive effect. Eating salad or eating kale is not very pleasurable. Okay? You cannot live on lettuce for the rest of your life unless you have something else with it. Um, you can't live on pure lettuce, but probably I could, but no one else could. So what we want to do is we want to consume, so it can't be, it has to be the, um, the fats. Okay? So we want to increase the fat in our diet. Why? Because sat is, fat is a satiety uh, effect on the body. It creates a satisfaction um, and it satisfies certain hungers and it makes you feel better. And so that's pretty much what I do. And I'm talking about the healthy fats and that would be like an <clears throat> egg yolk, um, uh, maybe some animal proteins, um, some nuts, peanut butter, um, those type of things. Um, even certain types of butter, like not certain types, but just butter, cooking in butter. Um, all that is very, very, very good to actually replace the carbohydrate effect of what this is going about right here. So we want to increase fat. There's various recipes that I have on my website that you can consume, make brownies uh, with butter and maybe um, egg versus grain and sugar. Okay, And you can use substitute sugars and alternative things, but we have to be conscious about what we're doing. We have to use substitutes and we also need to focus on being objective. Like, listen, there's a lot of pleasure in being healthy. There's a lot of pleasure in working out and having energy from that. I'm 48 years old. I've been really taking care of my body for a long time and building up my health. I have a lot of, my body gives me a lot of pleasure. Why? Because I invest in it. I take care of it. I get it healthy. I wake up. I feel energetic. Through the whole day, I feel great. Um, I exercise. I feel good from that. I don't have the fatigue that I did before. So there's a lot of pleasure in having health and being aesthetic because one thing that these pleasure foods make you look very unhealthy. You're not sexy anymore. You have this fat roll around your waist. How much pleasure do you get when you look at yourself in the mirror? Not very much. So look for the long-term pleasure of liking your body and enjoying that. But short-term, we want to think, okay, what can we use as substitutes? And then we also have to increase the nutrients in our foods to, to heal our bodies as well. So what's the moral of the story? Realize that these pleasure foods end up being painful foods. Um, it, it's a trap because they chemically... Food manufacturing companies chemically manipulate your hormones and keep you addictive to keep selling more, more of this, um, these products. Um, there is no profit in curing you, and that's why drugs only last for a certain amount of time, 24 hours, and you have to keep taking them. There's, there's no research that's going to cure you. Doctors don't spend a lot of time in educating you about the foods because there's no profit in fixing the problem. It's much better putting you on a drug and keeping you on that for the rest of your life. It's a business. So look through the whole thing where, oh, this is science and this is scientific medicine or this is science-based medicine. That's bogus. It's basically drug medicine. There's no science in it. It's about covering up your symptoms um, to keep you feeling better temporarily. Okay, and I'm not against drugs. I mean, if you cut off my arm right now, I will take, I will take an aspirin. 
or a, a stronger drug, or if I have a kidney stone, I will take something. But with something like this, you want to look at the foods. Okay, so apply this information, and I'll see you in the next video.